what only you can do, come and do in our midst. And the, your signs and your wonders are for the glory of your name. And the, let the troubles of our life. The way you kept quiet, that's why I was quiet. But the Lord said, if the devil can bring something out of nothing, how much money? From that day, I never asked for process. Because limited by process. We are the only ones that have to get this done by process. I went to ask the media unit to project a video clip that I want us to watch before the message will come. The Bible says in Genesis 6 11 when you read in verse 5 he said, who knows how bones grow in the womb of a woman? Nobody knows. Tonight, your miracle will come without a process. Yeah. Look at plate, give it some. that needed uh, the medical attention. And we went to see a professor of gynecologist. My wife was, uh, uh, on investigation, she was diagnosed of ovarian cyst. And uh, the 
the various was operated, but when she was opened up, uh, the professor called me and said, see, uh, there's a problem that uh, he needed to conduct a whole hysterectomy. Uh, the, the, the ovarian needed to be removed, and some other things needed to be removed just to uh, enable her leave. Hysterectomy, bro. The pro, Total removal of the womb. That is T A H. Yes. Total abdominal hysterectomy. Yes, sir. That is the whole uterus is removed, the cervix is removed, fallopian tubes are removed, ovaries are removed. Yes. That, that was exactly every it. single thing that makes the woman reproductive. And and that was not for what purpose? Just to enable her leave. To break her leave. Because it was a systemic damage inside of her. And that needed to be carried out just to make her leave. Medically, at times, the doctors say, let her lose the womb and save her life. Because the most vascular organ in the body is the womb, the uterus. Has more blood supply than any other part because of the, of, of the fact that it carries a child. So it can bleed, that's the only organ that can bleed the owner to death. Am I communicating? Yes. So the doctors removed the whole thing yes. to save her life. Yes. All right. So everything was removed. I obliged that everything was this. That was 2014. Four years ago. Four years ago. Everything was removed just to enable her leave. And uh, it was difficult for me to tell her thereafter that uh, this was exactly what was going on. I summoned courage and told her this has been done on you. Uh, she has a spare chance for a baby girl, and I said we can adopt. So we all agreed upon that. But again, after we forgot completely about having a baby, uh, because that was medically, it, uh, the doctor told us it cannot work again, and we agreed. I saw the womb and everything removed, so there was nothing like there was, it was an evidential material to show me that all of this had been done. So we agreed, and uh, it was done. To, uh, this year, eight, we started on the 8th of January. When we started our 21 days fasting, I, I was at a, I, I had a seminar presentation, so I, I was at Pamela and I met, I did it at Mando, uh, Mando uh, branch of the church, and that raised a song that captured my soul. And I was deep yearning for something inside me, a change, a shift in life, uh, spiritually, and I sent him a test that I needed to see him. It was an email that I needed to see him that I had this conviction, I needed a shift in life. And he obliged me. So I came on the 17th. And when I was coming, I carried along my wife. Uh, and we came and uh, daddy prayed for us. And uh, Paul emptied a total oil on us. And he said something, that anything not working in your life, he was pronouncing it upon my wife, anything not working in your life, from today it shall begin to work. We should go and make exploits in the new area we're just set to. So we never took in anything, but I thought it was just a normal prayer that he prayed for us. Uh, then February, uh, she started complaining of some issues that uh, is pregnancy related. But this, uh, this is a condition that she cannot take in again. A woman that is wombless. Medical history. So the doctor said, because my 
any ties is there. He said, no, we're not going to handle this on primary issues. It's not going to be a secondary, it's going to be a tertiary military uh, issue so that we can monitor her. And uh, I said, no problem. And uh, we all started that way. And uh, six, five months, six months with Antimata started, and uh, all of a sudden, on, on, on the Wednesday, on the Wednesday of last month, on the 10th of last month, a doctor now called me uh, a surgeon that he needed a team of other surgeons to handle this uh, peculiar case. And uh, should I avail them the opportunity to go ahead? I said, no, they should go ahead. That is not, uh, it shouldn't be a monetary challenge. So they, they summoned order and they, and they opened that up. They were going to the theater, it was a Wednesday, and I was going to the church. They asked me to donate the blood, and I said, I have no blood to donate. That God will take care of her. That is said something that when you mind God's work, God minds your work. <laughs> so I went down to the church, and after the, uh, the church section, I called, and they said, Pam, your, your, your wife has delivered a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> I want you to stand up and you to read with it. Thank you. You can stop it there. Is it your my
your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Word that God has spoken. 
Whatever God has spoken concerning you, whatever God has written concerning you, whatever is the will of God that is written, anywhere with God, that thing shall be performed. Did the doctor say that your womb has been removed? But the word of God says, none shall be buried in my house. Man. You may be wondering, how will that word be performed? With God, that word shall be performed. Amen. You know what the angel said to Mary in Luke 1, in verse 36? In the New Living, he said, what is more? Your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren. People used to say, there is somebody hearing it. Every negative proverb they have been using concerning you. After tonight, they will not use that proverb concerning you again. They will say, people used to say, because your story will definitely change. So divine possibility, number one, is performing the word spoken by God or written by God concerning his children. Luke 18, the Bible says in verse 27, he said the things that are impossible with men, they are possible with God. The things that are what? Impossible with men. They are possible with God. Now God speaks and it is done. Psalm 33, when you read in verse 8 and verse 9, He said, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, it was done. He commanded and he stood fast. Why is it that God speaks even before he performs? Bible says in Amos chapter 3, when you read in verse 7, he said, God will not do anything, but will reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophet. Why? So that they can speak it out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men. What God has prepared for them that love him, he said, he reveals it to them by his spirit. The reason why God speaks before he performs is that the Bible says, number one, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. That was what? That was made. Nothing is made outside the word. If the word is not there, nothing can happen. But when the word of God comes into that situation, the creative miracle of God steps into it. Amen. When you read in the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, the Bible says in verse 3, he said, through faith, we understand that the words we are framed by the word of God. So that the things which we see, we are made out of the things which we do not see. Now, through faith, we understand that the whole world as we see it is framed by the word of God. I want you to please understand this. As an engineer, I told you earlier, I try to process things in my head. When we talk about a frame, we can talk about the floor frame, the wall frame, the roof frame, the pillars, but the Bible says, true faith we know that the whole world was framed by the word of God. So every time one word is spoken, a frame is put in place. The next time another word is spoken, another frame is put in place. And so the more you speak, the more the frames are. And so if the frame or the thing you are trying to build is a house, you can imagine how many times you need to speak so that the frames can be put together. Am I communicating somebody? Now the Bible is telling us that every time God is going to do something, he will send his word first. The Bible says he sent his word. He healed them from their infirmities. He delivered them from their destruction. Why? The word of God is the creative power of God. 
It simply means that anybody that wants the impossible to be done, that person must first hear the word. Are you still in church? Anybody that wants the impossible to be done in his or her life, that person must first hear what? And the moment you hear the word, and you receive the word, and you hold on to the word, and you too can begin to say that word, there shall be a performance of the word. Because the word of God will never return to him void. Because forever, his word is what? Settled. Now, if you can understand that the word of God can never fail, and you can stay on it, then that word will produce results. You remember the Bible tells us about Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he said, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, he said, before you were formed in your, 1, verse 4, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Now, the first thing that came in verse 4 was the word of the Lord came to him. And he said that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah said, I'm a little child. I cannot speak. And God said, say not you're a little child. Now, if I ask you today, how old are you? If you want to be honest, you will tell me your age from the day you were born. But really, your age should be what you have told me plus nine months. Because you were alive in the womb of your mother. Am I correct? <laughs> now, but then this is the most I God saying to Jeremiah that I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So God is saying to Jeremiah, before your mother conceived you, I knew you. So I say, oh God, how did you know Jeremiah when he wasn't yet formed? Told them an engineer, I like to process things. How did you know him when he was not yet formed? And God said, I knew him as the word. Oh, the word became flesh. And he dwelt among us. The Bible says in the beginning was what? The word. Everything that existed started with what? The tree started with the word. The sun and the moon started with the word. The earth started with the word. You started with the word. So when God says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you as what? The word. Now if God knew you as the word and now brought you forth from the womb, it means if God is going to do a creative miracle in you today, how is he going to start? The day Anna spoke that word and the day Eli said, as you have spoken, beat unto you. That day was the day a miracle started. The day the angel brought the word to Mary. And Mary said, how shall this thing be? Knowing I know not a man. And then the angel said, the spirit of God shall come upon you. The power of the eyes will overshadow you. And Mary said, be it unto me, according to thy word. That day that miracle started. The day that Jesus got to the boat of Peter. And in the water where there was no fish. And Peter toiled all night and had caught nothing. And Jesus said to Peter, cast your net into the deep. In Luke chapter 5, the Bible says, Peter said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Luke 5, when you read verse 5, he said, we have caught nothing. But at thy word, we will cast the net. The moment he agreed with the word, the creating miracle of God, in the same river, with the same sea, where there was no fish, suddenly, Fish we are put there. What am I saying? The day you agree with the word, spoken by the man of God, spoken by God, spoken by his written word, the day you agree with it, that day, creative miracle is done. Amen. You saw the video clip we watched. They said they came to the man of God and they prayed, they poured a gallon of oil upon her and said, whatsoever is not working. They didn't even tell him that he had no good. The man was just moved to pray. He wasn't praying for her to have a womb. Because as far as they are concerned, that was a forgotten conclusion. They were no longer looking for babies. They were no longer looking for a womb. But the prayer the man of God prayed, whatever is not working in your life, begin to work. That prayer did, did create a miracle inside that woman. When she didn't have a womb, a sack was created so that a baby can come. There is somebody here.
hearing me. Today at the word of the living God, everything that's not working inside you, everything that's not working in your life, everything that's not in the right place, I pray by the word of God, they begin to fall in place. I said they begin to fall in place. In the name of Jesus, if you believe and you agree, let your amen be louder.
night is not deliverance night. It's not that I want to come here and cast out devils. What I want you to do is to have your, a heart that can receive. Many times we have cast out devils, devils have gone, but people are not equipped to receive from God. I pray tonight that you will receive. Amen. Don't forget the scripture we started with. When Elijah was going to call down fire, one sentence of prayer, fire came down. But when it was time for rain to come down, the Bible says he knelt and put his head in between his knees. And he was praying. And he told the servant, go and check. And the Bible said the servant went to check and came back and said, I see nothing. And he kept praying again. Somehow it looks like it is tougher to receive a miracle than to cast out a devil. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, but as the Lord God of heaven liveth, all you need to receive a miracle is just faith. Amen. That's all you need. If you can believe it, the power of God is available. Amen. So the Bible says in that scripture that we read, put it back there, Isaiah 34 verse 16. He says, the mouth of the Lord has commanded it. The spirit of the Lord shall do what? Years ago, the pastor told you the story of when he wanted to get married. I was going to get married too. But then, I'm ready for marriage. And then I didn't see the sister. You know that type of um, time you want to marry? And every sister in the choir just looks like maybe she's the one. <laughs> and then you see another sister in the usher, you say maybe it's this one. Then you just know you are not right. Because once you see that one, two, three, four, when three, four sisters are looking like they are the ones, you are most likely wrong. You know? <laughs> so I was crying to God, and then one night God said to me, Stop talking to me about this. You don't know my word enough. I don't know his word enough. So I withdrew. I stopped praying about marriage. I started studying the word of God, reading it day and night, day and night, reading the word. In far away Nigeria, I was in Abuja. And then about six months later, one lady who had been living in America, went to school in America, something just made her to say, I'm going back to Nigeria. I'm going back to Nigeria. Our friends told her, are you normal? You are leaving America to go back to Nigeria? Anyway, she relocated. And then when the youth service was going to post her to where she do youth service, it was a good job. When she was going to get where to work, it wasn't very far from where our church is. When she was looking for where to worship, it was her church she came to. <laughs> the point I want to bring out is, the mouth of the Lord has what? The spirit of the Lord. When the mouth of the Lord commands it and you also agree with that mouth, and you speak that word, and you believe that word, the Spirit of the Lord will go and gather with you. Yeah. I pray for somebody now, your prosperity will be gathered. Yeah. Your husband will be gathered. Yeah. Your wife will be gathered. Yeah. Your children will be gathered. Yeah. If you believe and you agree, say a better yeah. Because the one who executes the word is the spirit of God. And the moment you believe that word and you say it, what you are simply saying is, Holy Spirit, gather this miracle to me. Gather this miracle to me. In that Isaiah 34, the verse 16, the Bible says in the New Living Translation, it says, none shall be missing. None will lack their mate." He said, the Lord has promised this. His spirit will make it to come true. I don't know who God is talking to tonight, but the spirit of the Lord will make it come true for you. Yeah. If you believe it, say better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of Glory. But like I told you earlier, your faith is key receiving this. Your faith is extremely paramount. When you read in the book of, of, of Mark in chapter 11, the Bible tells us in verse 23, put it on the screen. 
Mark 11, verse 23. He said, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he does what? Then in verse 24 he said, Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you shall do what? <laughs> believe that you do what? <laughs> Please answer me. Believe that you do what? <laughs> and you shall do what? <laughs> now, if the person is the pastor, and he doesn't believe that he has received them. Will he have them? No. If the person is a bishop and he doesn't believe that he has received them, will he have them? No. So that's another area where we have challenge. So people pray, but then they don't believe that they have received. That's right. So tonight, before you even start praying, you have to settle in your mind do I want to believe? Is your choice? Do I want to believe? Give me the book of, of, of Luke, chapter 1, verse 41, verse 43. Luke 1, verse 43. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? This was when Mary came to the house of Elizabeth. Verse 44. He said, For as soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in my ears, the baby lived in my womb. For what? For joy. For joy. Verse 45. He said, Blessed is she that did what? That believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which we are told are from where? Now, they didn't say, Blessed is she that is believing. They said, Blessed is she that did what? The belief process is complete. Some people say, I am believing God for a job. Because you are still believing God. You have not finished believing. When you finish, God will start. Some people say, I am believing God for the husband. I am believing God for the miracle. You are still believing. You have not believed. You see, when you believe something, and your, your belief process has been complete. Yes. You will say to it, Amen. it's done. Amen. I have it already. Amen. How many people believe that there shall be a performance? Amen. I, I'm not shouting tonight. Because I want this to sink. Do you know that what the Bible says that belief is the same thing as thinking? Somebody say, I'm thinking of doing this. I am thinking of doing this. It means he has not concluded in his mind that he wants to be. He's still thinking about it. When he concludes in his mind, he will do it. Yes. Now, someone says, I am believing to do this. He has not finished. When he finishes, then God will perform. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Now, after saying that the Bible says it is only this group of people that there shall be a performance of the things that they have been told. Of the world, a performance of the world. How many of you want the performance of the world? Now, for there to be a performance, go back now to Mark eleven twenty four. What did he say we should do? Mark eleven twenty four. Quickly, put it on the screen. For there to be a performance, he says, "What things soever you desire, what things soever you do, what you desire, you desire a good car, you desire a good house." Nobody desires. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what things soever you do, what you desire. Yes. When you pray, believe that you want, yes. and you shall do what. Yes. Now, Pastor, the challenge we have is that a lot of people come to church without a desire. Yes. They already have the basic things of life, so there's no, there's no passion. There's no, there's no thirst. There's nothing they are looking for. Some people are already okay with where they are. So when they come, if God gives them fine, no problem. 
but there is nothing that they are saying they, they really want. You, you follow? Now, if, if, if you are married, you have two children and you have three dogs, what else are you looking for? <laughs> you know, what else are you looking for? Your, 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 your hands are full already. And so what else are you looking for? And you have two cars. Your wife has a car, you have a car. Uh, but the house you are living in is a mortgage of 30 years. And then the car is car note. You know, you, you, you have all those things and you are living fine. You, you really do have a desire. But then there are a few people, not all, a few, who desire something. Who are saying, God, you, you, you have done for those people, you have not done my own. And they are still thirsty, they are hungry, they desire something. Those are the people God is talking to. Yes. Now, but then I want to let people know, those who think that they have actually arrived, God says they are wretched. Yes. They think they have some wealth, but they don't have anything. In the eyes of God, they don't have anything. Right. Because if you have something, this church will be achieving much more. Yeah. They didn't get it. Yeah. That is, if you are really wealthy, yeah. we will feel it in church. We will be able to win more souls. We will be able to go to many more, more other places to plant more churches, expand the kingdom. What I'm simply saying is, if your mindset is thinking about just yourself, your desire will be small. Yeah. But if you begin to say, Oh God, I want to feed Somalia. Oh God, I want to eradicate malaria. Oh God, I want to do something in my village. One pastor was preaching at church Sunday, and the pastor said, God helped him as a full-time pastor to build an hospital in his village in Nigeria. And about 14 villages use that hospital and they don't pay a, a, a dime. And that in one year, they have been able to put to bed about a hundred and something babies and everything is free. He says, how he's able to fund it from America, he can't explain. But that is something so expensive that he has to keep crying to God, I need resources. Amen. Amen. Now, if you have a project like that, you will, you will have desire. <laughs> the reason why they don't have desire is that just you and your two children and your three dogs. <laughs> but don't pray that desire will rise. Yeah. Now, people say there is no miracle in America, but miracles happen in Africa. The reason why miracles happen in Africa is that there is lack in Africa. So desire is compulsory. Desire is compulsory. But here, there is there is provision. There is, there is convenience. So desire is 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 is, is, is not is not compulsory. Desire is just an anybody who wish. What I'm saying is, you can decide that you want to move away from the category of those who are complacent and comfortable, and step into the category of those who have strong desire for big things. Is there somebody like that in church tonight? When you go to Africa, where there's no medical help to be able to assist people that are sick, you will have desire for healing. Oh God, you need to do a miracle. Because if they say they should do an oppression, there's no electricity to do it. So the miracle must happen. But here, there's science. When you put science, and it's helping. So it doesn't make people to desire God's intervention. Because there is provision for it. And the system is such a good system. It's too good. It's so good that it's not allowing God to work. It's such a good system that even if you don't have money, they will do it for you. The most expensive surgery, kidney transplant, heart transplant, anything, they will do. And people will put themselves down. My wife and I will keep talking. Why do people trust their doctor more than God? More than God. The only time they remember the pastor is when the doctor gives up. And when the doctor gives up and they are sending him to hospice, yeah. they now say, Pastor, please come and take over. Yeah. And I say, You have come to me. <laughs> are you coming now? I need to come early. But I pray tonight that your desire will be satisfied. I say your desire will be satisfied. So tonight we are going to pray. Two things I'm going to do here tonight. 
The first one is a performance of every word God has written or spoken concerning you. Stand up on your feet. Jeremiah 1, give us verse 11 and 12. God said to Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. He said, what do you see? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Stop there, just 11. What do you see? The rain did not come until that servant saw something. When the servant of Elijah came back, he said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. The demand of God said, yes. I tell them rain is going to fall. The question is, in the same place where you have been praying and you have not seen results, you don't give up until you see. He said, go back and check. And they went to check. They checked seven times. And it was the seventh time that he was able to see something. That seven times will be seven weeks, to be seven months, it will be seven days, it will be seven hours. But he kept going back. To do what? To go and check. How long have you checked that matter? And you have given up. I'm saying to somebody, don't give up. Go back and check. Did you apply somewhere? Did you request to pass an exam? Did you rise to get a job? Is there something you desire? You pray. Look at how Elijah prayed. He put his head in between his legs to pray so that there will be a performance of what God had said to him. God was the one who said, I'm bringing rain on the land. And Elijah was the one who announced, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. But that didn't make rain to fall. It was prayer that made what was spoken to come down. He desired the rain. He wanted the rain. How many of you want the rain of your own blessing? Okay. If I ask you now, what do you desire? Can you tell me in three words? If you can tell me what you desire in three words, put up your hand. I can understand people don't put up their hand. I told you already. That's all. People don't have any desire. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, no, please, you should, you, should, you should celebrate them. They are comfortable. There's something they are, there's something they are smiling for. The only area where I need to correct them is that once you are not aspiring for something, you will start expiring. Once there's, when, once there's nothing that is big up there that requires your faith, requires you to say, God, do this for me, you will start expiring. And that is why you must never get to a point where you are comfortable. Yes, <laughs> you must never get to a point. The Bible says that just shall live by what? Yes. It means any time the just is no longer living by faith, we stop being, we stop being just. I don't know if I'm communicating to church. Ah. That is, if you have enough money to pay your bills, something is wrong. <laughs> you, 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 seem, you seem not to get my point. Yeah. If you have enough money to solve your own problems, something is wrong. You should have more problem than the money you have. So, as God is blessing you with funds, you also must be crying to God for more assignments to do for him. That is what is going to keep you as the just who is living by what? Yes. And then today you might be talking about earning a hundred thousand. Tomorrow it might be two hundred thousand. But next year you may be talking about earning two million. Why? Because your level must keep changing. Yes. But then you tell yourself, Oh God, thank you for bringing me to America. Thank you for this breakthrough. I've been able to get a mortgage for this three-bedroom house. And my two children, thank God. 
Sometimes what could be three dollars. <laughs> And then for the next 30 years, 30, 30, 30 years, we are in a three bedroom house, paying the same mortgage, and you are planning to retire there. Is that progress? But you know, that's, people's, that's the goal of, that's what they call the American dream. I'm only trying to say it's not the right way to go. We can change the story. You must be progressive and you must desire to be progressive. Give us that Jeremiah 1 verse 12 now. Verse 12. I want us to see together because I want us to pray a few prayers. Jeremiah 1. Just by traveling. 
But do you know there are things that God can make your eyes to see in the spiritual realm? Joseph was in the same house with his brothers. And God showed him a vision where he would be on the throne and his brothers would come and bow to him. He said he saw the sheep of his brothers bowing to his own sheep. He said he saw the stars, the sun and the moon bowing to him. Ah! The sun bowed to you? The moon bowed to you? And the father said, are you saying myself and your mother will be bowed to you? People of God, if God can give you a vision of your tomorrow and you can see it, your level will change. Amen. Your attitude will change. Amen. The things you'll be desirous of will be different. Amen. How many of you want to really see the picture? The picture of God for you. Lift up your voice and say, Father! Amen. Your thoughts concerning me are bigger than my thoughts for myself. Open my eyes to see what your plan for me in life in the Jesus, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes to see it. what you have planned for me, open my eyes, open my eyes to see it, open my eyes, let me see what you have planned for me, come and let's see your word to perform it, come and let's see your word to perform it. Something that they told you this thing is impossible. It's impossible. 
If they didn't tell you it's impossible, don't carry impossibility on your head. Just fly over it. Your mother fly. If they told you this thing is impossible, it can't be done. He told you it can't be done. He told you forget it. There's no need for you to trouble the master anymore. This is a forgotten conclusion. But you come with faith. I want those of you in front, lift up your hand to heaven. The pastor told you to pray. And the way he told you to pray is you must pray with some desperation. You must pray with some desperation. Desperation. You are the ones that God organized this meeting for. That which is impossible with men, they are possible with God. That which man says can't be done. We are men say they give up. God says I am just cut. Lift up your voice and say, Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Just cry to God for mercy. Just cry to God for mercy. Whatsoever is that thing they call the impossible. Whatsoever is that thing that they say can never be done. Lord, I am asking for mercy. I am asking for mercy. Even in judgment, remember mercy. In judgment, remember mercy. In judgment, remember mercy. Remember mercy over these your children. Mercy for the fruit of the womb. Mercy for children. Mercy for jobs. Mercy for healing. Mercy for deliverance. Mercy for spouse. Mercy to settle them around. Mercy to pay their bills. In judgment, remember mercy. possibilities. We make 
that which is missing to be created. Yeah. And we will get new ones in the name of Jesus. Yeah. New orders you are getting. Yeah. New businesses. Yeah. New jobs. Yeah. New testimonies. Yeah. New jobs. Yeah. All 
those that are contending with you. Wherever you have suffered delay, suddenly you will begin to move forward. You will begin to move forward. Suddenly the hand of God will begin to propel you forward. Faster than you can imagine. In the name of Jesus. That verse 46 says in the NIV version, the power of the Lord came on Elijah and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. I pray that the anointing of God that makes a person to cover up for whatsoever they have lost in time, I pray that that anointing will come upon you in the name of Jesus. There's an anointing that comes upon a person that makes you to be above your competitors. Yes, I'm going to explain it to you. You may not be able to understand it, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you. Amen. At that time, Elijah was on the mountain top. Ahab, the king, was down and he was in the valley. But the Bible said the hand of God came upon Elijah. From the mountain top, an old man outran the chariots of the king and got to Jezreel before the king. And they were wondering what carried him. The next time they are going to see you, they'll be wondering what carried him. They'll be wondering how come you are ahead of him. They'll be wondering how come you are outside them. Wherever you are right now, and things are slow for you. By the hand of the living God, the Lord will propel you forward. He will shoot you forward with the rocket. In the name of Jesus. I, I, please see that I need to explain it. What slowed Elijah down was that rain didn't fall. What slowed Elijah down was that he was praying to God for something to happen. But the moment that prayer was heard, suddenly, Every time he has lost, he got him back. Amen. He outran the king. Amen. He got to the place before the king. Why? Because what had been delayed him had been taken off. Yes. There are people hearing me that you think you have lost time. You think you have lost time. But after this weekend, that which has been difficult, that which has been impossible, that which you have not been able to get, God will answer you. Yes. And you will first few months, we lost the place where we were worshipping. And we were practically just worshipping in school classrooms in Brooklyn. Things were tough and difficult. Then one day, one of my ministers shared with me and said, Pastor, I had a dream. You came to visit us in the house. And then you told us that you were going to the church. And a few hours later, we also decided we were going to the church and when we, on the way, we met you, you were still on the road, you had not got into the church. And then we said, oh, pastor is new. He doesn't know the road to the church. That's why he's on the slow lane. And then they were on the fast lane. So he said, now woke up from the tree. I said, which month did you have this? He said, about three months ago, and you didn't tell me. <laughs> So since three months ago, God told you I've been on the slow lane. <laughs> it's okay, thank you. So I left him. I had to go and pray. Oh God, you showed your son that I'm on the slow lane. Remove me from that slow lane. Bring me to the fast lane. People of God, you will think that it's an ordinary prayer. Immediately, things began to change. The church where we were struggling to get a place of worship, we got a place where we are staying now. We bought properties, we bought land. We are still trusting God to build them. We have about four different lands now in different locations in the city. Now, what is my point? From there, I was elevated from just a French pastor to a pastor, from a pastor to a provincial pastor. Why? 
In three years, I saw God moving me from the slow lane to where? I don't know who you are, but you have been dining with tortoise. You have been dining with snails. You have been on the slow lane of life. Somehow, what takes your contemporaries few days to achieve takes you months and years. As the Lord God of heaven liveth, the mighty hand of God will come upon you tonight to prepare you forward like a rocket in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and say, Father, move me out of the slow lane. Move me into the fast lane. In the name of Jesus, accelerate my motion in life. 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 Whatsoever's time be down, the time be down no more. Whatsoever time be down, the time be down no more. Accelerate my motion. Accelerate it. Accelerate it. Accelerate it. Accelerate it. Accelerate my motion. Place. Yeah. Do you know even in the church, even in the church, when they 
is a lift that is coming to you. People around you are like, why he wants to leave us? He don't want you to leave. He wants you to stay. But I pray that whatsoever is holding you down, the anointing that will make you to break that anointing will come up. Yes. Let me explain this to you. Throw a stone up, it will come down. Because there is gravity pulling it. But when the plane is going to take off, it needs greater energy to break away from gravitational force to be able to go up. The moment it gets up, it's not seeing it force anymore. When the plane is up, they cruise. They just cruise. Yeah. But to go up is the difficult task. Yes. That is what you want to do now. You want to deal with going up. But when man is holding you down, you want to say, let me go. I am breaking free. Lift up your voice and say, Father! Verse 1. 
And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when the of Ashdod arose early on the morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face yes, to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when he arose early on the morrow, morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hand were cut off <laughs> upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon uh -huh. nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. Verse 6. Let's read it together. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon the head of Ashdod and he destroyed them and smote them with arrows, even Ashdod and the coast of the Arab. What I want you to just see what the hand of God when it's going to work on your behalf. It means enemies that have been holding you down. Suddenly, God will cut off their hands. Amen. God will cut them off. Amen. They will not be able to hold you down anymore. Amen. God will release you Amen. from whatsoever is holding you down. Amen. Lift up your voice and say, Father, Father by your mighty hand, Father, deliver me Father, from every invisible hand. hand that is holding me down. Let your mighty hand deliver me. Let your mighty hand deliver me. Let your mighty hand deliver me. Deliver me by your mighty hand. Deliver me by your mighty hand. Deliver me by your mighty hand. Deliver me by your mighty hand.
to send him back far from the destiny God ordained for him. There are some of us that you know the type of prayer before that you pray before you go visa. Before they gave you visa to come to America, you know the type of prayer you pray. Yes, sir. But since you got the visa and you have arrived, you think everything is okay. There are devils in America. If they have not told you, let me tell you, there are devils waiting for you. That the devil in your village had already given them your social security. <laughs> So they are here and waiting for you already. And let him arrive. You already have his number. And they are to continue business. But tonight, you are going to pray. The God who remembered Joseph in the prison, where they put him, must remember you tonight. The Bible says, God remembered Noah and brought him out of the ark. God remembered Joseph, brought him out of the prison. God remembered Rachel, made her to carry baby. God remembered Anna, made her to conceive. Somehow, if God doesn't remember a person, the person stays there. But I pray wherever you are right now, and they think they have sealed your destiny, Jehovah God will remember you. Yeah. I say Jehovah God will remember you. Yeah. The Most High will remember you. Yeah. Lift up your voice and say, Father, yeah. we are my men have put me. Yeah. We are men have kept me. Yeah. Remember me tonight. Tonight 
in the name of Jesus. Bring me out, bring me out. Bring me out, bring me out. To that place of abundance, bring me out. To that place of breakthrough, bring me out, bring me out. Bring me out in the name of Jesus. Remember me tonight and bring me out. Remember me tonight and bring me out. Remember me tonight. Set to all that concerns me. Bring me out to my wife in place. Bring me out. Bring me out. Bring me out. Remember me and bring me out.
that everything needed for your new life will be available. So what I want you to pray is, oh God, remember me. Wherever life has kept me, whatever it is that has kept me down, remember me tonight and bring me out. Remember me tonight and bring me out. Remember me tonight and bring me out. Remember me. Remember me and deliver me. Remember me. And bring me out. Bring me out. Bring me out of this sickness. Bring me out of this poverty. Bring me out of this affliction. Bring me out of this torment. Bring me out. Remember me and bring me out. Remember me and bring me out. Remember me. And bring me out of God. Bring me out.
from their home. In the name of Jesus. Every leg that is standing upon your destiny. And he's saying that you will not rise in a mysterious way that cannot be explained. You will rise above them in the name of Jesus. Whosoever is in your foundation, whosoever is in your root, whosoever is in your DNA, that is pulling you back, that is pulling you down. You carry today the DNA of Jesus. I declare that you begin to rise in the name of Jesus. Nobody could stop the rising of Christ. He ascended to heaven. I pray tonight that your rise is unstoppable in the name of Jesus. Jesus' mighty name.